So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about spaces. So Akana used to call them co-spaces in the world of uh, Cisco. It's just spaces. Okay, same thing. So at the moment, we've got a user, HQ1, for example, and we can make calls to back and forth between other users, HQ2, HQ3. Those are our three users. They can all call each other. But I haven't talked about calling into a user's persistent space, if you like. So into his conference room, his or her conference room, I should say. So what we are going to do then is we've got these three users already added, either using the GUI or the API, but we're going to change the LDAP mappings. So we had LDAP mappings, which was also was in the GUI and also in the API. And we just created inside there, so remember, API, V1, AP, LDAP mappings. We just created JID mapping, which is our account name. And we are retrieving that from the Active Directory using that SAM account name field. We gave it a description, the descriptive name, which is our name mapping. Okay, let's just take a look at those two fields that we have there. If I go inside the GUI, and over here we are, we have our users, and this here is the name mapping. This is the CN common name, and this here was the SAM account name, and then I manually specified the at sign and then the domain, the host portion there. So this is the JID, the, uh, the JID mapping was using the SAM account name, and then this is the common name uh, imported from Active Directory, but if I go down to configuration spaces, we don't have any spaces. So I could create a team space, a generic space that anyone can call into that doesn't belong to a specific owner. So that we can do that, team space. And the number there is 72022999. And, and the call ID, this is when a guest who has not signed in is joining the call in progress and they would be prompted to enter the call ID. So I'm going to just make that the same number, 72022999. Hit submit there on the right hand side. So what I could do now is I could call in from one of my users, click new call here on the top left, and then just type in 72022999, hit enter. You see how that's resolved to team space. This means that it's um, it knows about it, it's, it's going to work. Hit make a call in, okay. And now I'm gonna go to the other machine that has Chrome running and I'm gonna, the, no one signed in here, this is a guest and I'm gonna then just join call and I'm prompted to enter, the, this is the call ID. So the call ID is is the, uh, the call ID in the team space, 72022999. Passcode was empty, so we should be able to just click continue. My name, Vic join call and then we should theoretically okay you see now there's two participants again without a camera can't really see too much and chat should be enabled in my second video in this series the previous video I enabled chat the message board enabled equal true in the call profile that doesn't just apply to point-to-point uh, -point calls but it applies to calls into spaces as well the chat is enabled there as well so that's a generic team space this is not a space associated with any individual user so if you want to call into my specific persistent meeting room if you like then we need to do something on the LDAP mappings if I then go to the LDAP mappings over here uh, search LDAP mappings and let's go down here and we, we we currently we are using JID mapping and name mapping to create the account and a and a string a first name last name there the name mapping. We can also create now forget this term co space just space space URI mapping. What are we using? How how are we going to be calling into a user's space? So if I go back to my whiteboard right now, if you're going to be calling a user, you're going to be calling HQ1 at cciclabsert.com. So let's just, so I'm gonna HQ, HQ, so the JID here for HQ1 is HQ1 at 
CCI. I'm just going to abbreviate that to CCI.com. And so someone can call using that URI. But if they're going to call my space, I'm going to just say it's going to be it's going to be HQ1 dot space. And that's how we're going to be calling. And let's just say we're going to be using the full URI. And let's just I'm going to just create a different. Well, let's 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 use CCI.com as well. Doesn't really matter what the domain name is. Depends on your org. How how do you want people to call into a, a user space? So HQ one dot space, and uh, again we'll talk about the the domain name portion. Really focusing on the URI portion right now. So um, I, the, and I also have this team space. The team space is created already, which is the URI portion. But I'm going to eventually have CCI collapsert dot com. I'm just abbreviating that with just a CCI dot com. So. At the moment, let's just focus on the URI portion. This is how we call the user, the top way. This is this is working right now, but this is not calling into a user's persistent meeting room or, or space. I'm going to be calling that guy using hq1.space. Let's not worry too much about the domain name right now. So when I'm going to be importing the user, I'm going to be using so I'm going to be using co space in the LDAP mappings, co space URI mapping is it mappings or map mapping yeah mapping singular no s so mapping i'm going to be using again that sam account name and then which is what we use to create the jid this is the, this is that thing over there the username and then we're going to be doing just dot space and we can also give it a name, a descriptive name. So I've got this, if I look at the document there, we've got this co-space name mapping. So again, this is all optional. Co-space name mapping. And that's going to be, what should we call that? Should we just say CN, common name, so 1HQ. I'm going to use apostrophe S, and then I'm going to put a space there and put space. There's a little space there. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to be. I introduce two new fields. There is also a secondary URI mapping. So we, if you wanted just to say, I want to be able to call um, a number, a specific number with a prefix maybe, then you that would be our secondary access. So co-space secondary URI mapping potentially could be a, a telephone number, for example. So let's go with that right now and I'll introduce, this will be a put command on the LDAP mappings. Okay, LDAP mappings is what we want to type in here, and it should be able to be uh, autocomplete. And we're going to do a put because we're modifying an existing mapping. Oh, but we have to specify which mapping we're using because we can have more than one mapping. So we'll need to grab that string there. It's in my notepad plus plus as well from earlier, but let's just grab it there. Put that at the end. So at the moment, if I do a get on that, I'm, I'm actually getting more information on a specific mapping at the moment the co-space name mapping is empty the U this is a good way to grab those parameters as well by the way um i'm not going to be using secondary uri i'm just going to be doing the the um, co-space uri and the name mapping right there so let's do a put command over here and then we get a body uncheck anything that we have there right now and then we're going to be using or well, we can copy paste that in Better from copy pasting from the document, I guess. So when you do a get on the specific mapping, getting those empty parameters is kind of useful. So the name mapping then is just a just common name. So one HQ, first name, last name, and in dollar signs, which means we're looking at the variable, the contents of it. Apostrophe S space. So this will be like one HQ space. And the co-space, the actual URI mapping itself. Is going to be, and I can just grab what we had earlier, that field there. Dollar sign and then dot space. You can't put an actual space character here in the JIN mapping or the URI mapping. So that put command, let's just try that. Do we get the 200 okay? Yes, we do. So right now, we are going to hit sync 
and this time not only do we import the users we're going to see three new spaces here so let's go down to active directory sync now first of all do we have the users the users are there do we now have an individual space and we do there so you see here on the left hand side this is the co-space name mapping just a descriptive name and this is the dialable string this is the the uri user part which is the left hand side of the at sign you don't get involved in putting the right the, the host portion here we'll talk about the host portion coming up very shortly but as it stands right now we're just talking about the left hand side of the at sign so you don't you don't you, i just call 7202 or i call hq1.space and if i go in on my api and do a get and let's just put co-spaces. You can see I've got four spaces. One is the team space, but if I go into a specific space now, copy that, this is HQ1, put forward slash and paste that. You can see there is, it's tied to a specific owner. The owner is this guy over here, and it tells you what, who that owner is below in the owner JID and that's hq1 cciclabs.com so this it knows then that there's a specific space h called hq1.space that's tied to a specific owner only the owner can initiate that call whereas the team space doesn't have an owner you went to team space let's just go find that let's just take a look at the team space get the id there copy it and then it's pasted in there hit send we don't see any owner like we did before so if i go to my machine over here site cpc who am i right now i am hq3 hq and if i want to call into hq2 space doesn't have that guy doesn't have to be signed in it's a persistent meeting room so hq2 dot space hit enter and it should pop up with the name the uh, space name so 2hq space the apostrophe s space and i can call into that and um, HQ2 hasn't hasn't joined that space yet. It hasn't joined their meeting room yet. So I'll leave that. I'm just going to make another call into the team space. So that's a number seven two zero two two triple three. Wrong. Well, that should resolve to team space. Let's just see what's going on there. Two triple nine. I keep making that mistake in my lab. I think it's two triple two triple three seven two or two two triple nine. Hit enter. I make a call there. If I go down here and invite a participant, we can see here we're just this. Is, this would be what the text inside an email, and there we don't really have a well. We don't have a domain. But let's talk about the the domain now. The right hand side of the at sign. Everything up to now has been the left-hand side, as I mentioned earlier. So over here, you can see URI user part, and you could have a secondary user as well. For example, you could take the IP phone field or the telephone number field and have a specific telephone number to dial into rather than just using hq1.space. Um, so in a, in a, so uh, the, 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 this is all the user part. You don't, when you add a space like this, you don't even mention or talk about the the actual domain name well the domain name is specified by incoming call handling rules and at the moment i've got no call handling rules so there's nothing here which basically there's, there's a permit ip any any so let's take a look at what happens when jabber or my 8845 phone makes a call in to the cms into either actually calling a user or calling an actual space we should be able to do both so I'm going to go into my call manager and we're going to need a SIP trunk. So just let me just further explain what we're doing right now. We're going to have a call from the 8845 phone, which is registered to call manager. We're going to call this guy's going to call. So HQ phone one here is going to call 7202233. And when that happens, we're going to hit a wrap pattern. 
two triple three that's going to be created in the UCM. That's going to point to a SIP trunk, SIP two CMS. And it's important that we use in the SIP trunk destination the FQDN of the CMS, and that will be more will be apparent when we do the conference bridge conference call coming up in a, in a short while. So for now, I'm going to add a SIP trunk pointing to the CMS, but I'm going to be using not IP address. Normally, you probably use an IP address in the destination field, port 5060. We're going to be using the FQDN. This is extremely important for, in fact, you know, it's not critical. We could just change it later on. So let's, let's go ahead and stick with the FQDN for now, and then maybe I'll switch it up to IP address. There's a point there to be made. Okay, so let me add a SIP trunk then into the CMS. I don't know if I already have one of those or not. Okay, and then we're going to just call this CMS. Default device pool, and then we go down below, and then we are going to be putting in, well, the A record is HQ, you can copy paste it if you want, hqcms.ccie.collabcert.com, port 5060, default SIP trunk security profile, and default SIP profile, nothing special there. Let's hit save. Reset. And then we're going to add a wrap pattern. Seven two oh two two triple nine. Gonna leave it in the num partition so everyone can see it. Pointing to the CMS trunk. At this point in time, I'm going to just fire up my phone view, Unified FX. So then from the HQ phone, select the HQ phone, and then I'm going to, from the pull down there, dial, and I'm going to dial 72022999, hit send, and just make sure that call works. You can see from that screen capture there that the call is working. Now I want to go through and do some tracing. Now what I suggest you do in the lab when you're playing around with CMS, just go to logs, detail tracing, and just enable SIP for 24 hours. That will be totally fine. You've got very few calls. There's going to be no detrimental impact on the CMS. So now I'm also going to make this a bit, sm uh, let's, let's stick with it, make it clearer. Let me maximize, let me widen it a little bit. I'm going to make a call in, repeat the call. Control C that, and I will do a uh, right click there on the tab and set copy all to clipboard. Then Notepad. If I work my way up here, I'm looking for the invite. I could just have searched for the string invite, but I'd rather be inefficient. Okay, here you can see then an incoming T uh, SIP TCP from the subscriber call manager and the invite's coming in, but look at the invite where it's coming in too. It's it's not the, the request URI. I grab that, use my whiteboard. The phone here just called the digits, but what the CMS is seeing is that, well not that, let me just get my pointer, drag that over here. We're seeing this coming into the CMS. So what's happening then is when you make a call in from the SIP trunk, we are seeing this domain name, the host portion of the URI being added. This is the SIP trunk destination. It derives that. You can't have a request URI without a 
full URI. You have to have the user portion and the host portion. So it's deriving that. Oh, well, that's new. I didn't realize that was, that was gonna that was gonna happen. Actually, that's new for me. So, <laughs> so this is so this here then is is a SIP trunk destination. Okay. Now, if it was an IP address, it would be the IP address colon fifty sixty. Okay. I'm gonna put SIP trunk destination there. It's also extremely important when we come to register the conference bridge later on. But for now, you can see the calls coming in, and I could join the space because I have no inbound call rules. So if I take a look at my call rules end, so under configuration, incoming calls, it's empty. All right, so I process everything. Any domain name is going to be accepted once that's mapped, once obviously it's going to be accepted, and we're going to target spaces or users or IVRs. And then we're going to be looking. So at the moment, we're just looking at the right hand side of the, the, the actual domain name, the right hand side of the URI. So the host portion and it matches because it's an empty one. That's a match all permit IP any any if you like. And then we're going to be looking at the left hand side, which is the telephone number 72022999. And does that match a specific user or a space? And it matches this guy here, and that's why we're getting into this team space. Now, I don't suggest we leave it like that because if if the lab has has mentioned that there is a specific uh, domain name that can be processed, then I don't want any other domain name to be processed. So, for example, let's go in here and add h add um, hqcms.cci.collab.com. In fact, before I do that, I'm just going to make one more call. I'm going to just make sure I can call that. There's, there's me calling the, the user, but can I call the actual, sorry, that, there's me calling the team space, but can I actually call the user? Well, actually it's a bit difficult from here because the user, um, well, let's take a look at my call manager there. Okay, I, I do I have these URIs added? I may well do. So if I, in, in Core Manager, if I, I don't have any URIs here. So if there was a URI, then obviously the local URI would match. But right now, if I called HQ1 at cciclapsit.com, then there's no local match. I haven't set up ILS inside my Core Manager, so there's no match here. So what I could do then is I could say I'm going to have a, have a SIP route pattern to cciclapsit.com. Point that to CMS. Okay. Now, if I did have ILS and those users HQ1, CCI Clubs, HQ2, and HQ3 were local in Core Manager, then this wrap pattern wouldn't work. It would be the the closest match, and it would be the local URI that would work. It wouldn't. Um, you'd have to have some different U, different uh, domain name uh, provisioned in CMS. But right now, because I don't have ILS Global Dial Plan Replication, nothing like that going on. There are no URIs in my Core Manager. So when I call HQ1 at collapser.com, it's not going to match a local user. It's going to go and be sent to this SIP trunk. So let me go and do that right now. I've got the syslog follow on there. Dial HQ1 at cci.collapser.com. Send. I don't even know if this guy's signed in. Who am I signed in now is over here? That's three, okay, let me, let me call HQ3 so we can hear at least ringing. HQ3 at cciclapsit.com, hit send. That guy should be ringing right now, and he is. Can answer the call. Now, the 8845 has video, the camera enabled. There's my classroom, the Club Cert classroom in San Jose. And uh, so we, we've, we've, we've got a call working. Now, if I go in and take a look at the SIP invite coming in, let's just right click on there and then copy all to clipboard like we did before. And then let's just paste it into Notepad, Control A, Control V. And then let's search for invite. 
well, there's my original call into the team space. And I, there, when I just call numeric digits, remember the FQDN of the server, the SIP trunk destination is added because we can't have a request URI line or a two line without the domain name in there. So, but that's, that's the original call. Let's go to the next invite. So let's go to invite space SIP. That should take us to the next invite message. And here, this is the URI. Now it doesn't add the SIP trunk destination because I called the full URI. Okay, so I call hq1 at cciclapser.com. So in this case, there's already a domain name added in the request URI line. I don't need to add the SIP trunk destination in this instance. So in other words, I would need to have an incoming call rule to this domain so I can call the users, cciclapser.com. And I'd also have to have one, let's go in the backward direction, an incoming call rule to the the FQDN of the server. This is when somebody in call managers called a team space using numeric digits and not with the FQDN. Okay, so we'll need to have two inbound call rules. One is the SIP trunk destination and one is the domain name of the users that I'm calling. So at the moment I'm getting around this because I don't have anything. I didn't hit submit there by the way. So I don't have any rules. So all domain names are processed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put cci.collapser.com and let's just put, I'm going to put, let's put 50 for now, add new, and then I'm going to have another one. And now, right now, the only domain name that's processed is cci.collapser.com. I would not be able to, there's no, there's no catch all here. Once you've added one rule, this permit IP any, any, if you like, has been removed. That property is no longer there. So right now, if I called, the team space where it will pre will add the uh, SIP trunk destination, 7202299. This call is going to fail now. And there'll be, there'll be a 404 not found. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay, there's a 404 not found because we are unable to make, to, to identify, well, there's no incoming call rule to hqcms.cisco.com. Okay, so when I call in numerically right now, that call failed. Let me just get to my phone view and the call there. Okay, because the default property that was existing earlier has now been removed. Because once you add one call handling rule, then the second one here looks like it should still be there and active, but it's not. It doesn't do anything. So the only domain name we're, we're using right now or we can process is this one here. When I dial numerically, it added the SIP trunk destination, which was hqcms at, cci, at cciclapsit.com. So we have to put, at minimum, you should always have two of these rules, okay? So now the, call, the CMS can process calls coming in with this domain name and also this one here. So the, the, that call should work again. Let's just verify that. Hit send. Okay, and that works. You can tell by the screen, the uh, screen capture there. So these incoming call rules are also the you, the domain name of the space. Let me tell you why. Let me show you how we've determined that. I'm going to call into the team space here. So let's go team space, call in. And then when I go down here to invite, you can see here, when I go to invite, what is the full space ID? So there's the URI portion, okay? The user portion of the URI, and this is the host portion. It's determining this from the highest priority incoming call rule. So cciclabsit.com, well, maybe my space ID should be something else. Maybe it's gonna, it should be the HQCMS, or maybe it's a completely different one. So I don't want to leave it like that because if I've got instruction that the space ID has a specific domain name, you can determine what that is when you invite invite somebody. So the highest priority incoming call rule here was CCI club set. Let's go and make this the highest priority. Submit that. And let's repeat that call. Call into the team space or 
Okay, and then invite. And you can see now that's switched up. So it does take the highest priority incoming call rule to, to determine what the domain name of the space is. So if you had a, th a third string, for example, with a third domain name, you would then make that the highest priority. So let me go in here and edit that one. 99. And let's just say that the space name was CMS space.com. And we're going to be putting 100, the highest number there. Then if I, then this obviously, I'm not going to show you that, but this will be the domain name of all my spaces. And so all these spaces that I have down there, the user part is determined here. So hq1.space or 72022999. The domain name is the highest priority incoming call rule. So the full team space FQDN or URI is going to be 72022999 at cmsspace.com and and so and set likewise for the individual user spaces hq1.space at cmsspace.com so right now i've got a call from call manager phones into the team space okay that's that's there and added already also call manager can call the actual users hq1 at ccie.com, just abbreviating that, skipping the collabsert.com. Okay, so I can call the user or I can call a team space, but I can't right now call a user's um, space right now. So how would I be able to call uh, hq1.space? Well, here I can just, if you remember, the, the full space domain name is CMS space. What did I put in there? My incoming rule. Let's just take a quick look at that. CMSspace.com. So I would then, in this instance, have a new SIP wrap pattern, CMSspace.com. And you could have a secondary URI, so you can actually call a numeric string to um, to get into the user space as well. But I won't I won't do that right now. Okay, and so in that case, I would just go to the call manager then and have a new SIP route pattern. cmsspace.com does and there's a matching inbound call rule it'll match that rule and then look for the uri user portion which is going to be hq1.space so let's call that guy now at cmsspace.com And you can see there from the screen capture that that call has worked. Incidentally, if we wanted to make calls outbound from CMS, WebRTC clients into the call manager, then those will be the outbound call rules. And since I don't have any URI set up in call manager, I can't really test URI calling into the call manager, but let's just say this was the call manager so let's just put in ucmdomain.com okay and this is the uri the the host portion of the domains inside call manager then over here we'd put in the the call manager ip address or fqdn we we'll probably put in um, a priority here this is priority 100 first choice encryption i think we'll just put unencrypted we haven't got a secure sip trunk in this example and then we can also put ucmdomain.com and then, oops, I've got a typo in the one above. Unencrypted. 
and this would be a lower priority. The publisher's uh, the backup core processing, so let's just put 99 there. And this here will be a dot there. So those would be my outbound call rules. So if, if the WebRTC client Chrome called user at ucmdomain.com, it would match this outbound call rule. We could do some transformation before we send the call as well. Um, in my case, if I'm just calling the digits, if I look inside my core manager, my route plan report, I've got globalized numbers in there, plus one, 408, 202, 2001. I'm in the wrong place here. Give me one second. Okay, so this guy here, this is my uh, 8845 phone. So if I wanted to call that guy, then there's no domain there. So we can leave this, I think, empty. If we leave it empty, and then just put in 192.164.12. And let's just say this is a low priority. I'm gonna, this is priority 10, put unencrypted. Then we'll have the backup. Priority nine. So my WebRTC clients now can just call plus one, 408, 202, 2001, or two or three, my Jabber devices or my HQ 8845 phone and it would match this one here, and it would send it to the subscriber call manager. So let's just give that a try. New call, plus one, 408, 202, 2001. My 8845 phone here should be ringing. Let's answer that. And you can see there's an active call then between the CMS WebRTC client and the call manager registered device, the 8845 phone over there. So those are the outbound call rules.